Okay. You're recording. You're recording this meeting. Okay. So, social studies. So, for homework, you guys had to do your tribe things. Actually, I should probably check those chats just in case there's somebody from class. Um, one second, guys. Okay, that was from a different class. So, social studies. So, who can name the four tribes? Somebody tell me the four tribes that we've learned about so far. Hopi. Hopi is one. Good. What's the next one? Navache, something like that. Navache. Yeah, Na Navajo is good. Navajo. What was the other one here? Navache. Wow. Everybody mute your music. Everybody mute them. Mute yourself, please. Okay, I'll go through and manually mute you myself. Okay, uh, Alyssa and then Abril. Uh, Alyssa, give me the the other name. So we have, what are the first two that you guys said? Hopi, Navajo. What are the last? Navajo. And then, wait. The Penobscot or Penobscot? And let's hear from Abril. I think Abril said it. Abril, what was the fourth one? I I said Navaches, something like that. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's like yeah. Naches. Naches. There you go. So we have Navajo is one, and Naches is a different one. So good. So we have Hopi. We have Navajo. We have Penobscot and we have the Natchez. So those should have been the four that you've, oh, this is ELA. Please mute yourselves. Um, this is going to be my new rule as well. Um, and if, and uh, I might have to talk with your parents about it. I'm not quite sure. If you're too disruptive in live class, I will just kick you from our live meeting and you will just have to watch the recordings. OK, uh, if you can't be here live and be respectful, then I don't want you here and you can just watch the live recordings and I will still hold you to the standard of watching the videos. OK. Um, so. Here is here's our homework, right? So this should have been Hopi. This should have been Navajo, Penobscot and um, what was the fourth one again? Natchez, right? Um, and then in these boxes, you would have told me something about um, all of the tribes. So I look forward to looking at those guys. Um, I'm sure you all did really good. You are all very smart. Um, and today we're going to talk about a new group of um, Native Americans. OK, so can everybody see my screen? And I can't see you guys, so maybe if you could say yes. 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 OK, sweet. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. Let me do something. Yes. So I'm joining twice. That way. Is that better? Are you guys? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. My second device, you're not yeah. getting a really pitchy sound anymore, right? Okay. I'm only doing this so I can like see you guys. It's going to be kind of funny. I want to be able to see you guys in case you have your like hand raised. Um, so I have both of you here. OK, so let's go on. So here is the Haudenosaunee. OK, so the Native American tribe uh, that spoke Iroquoian, um, they were known as the I Iroquois. So remember, we talked about this, the Iroquoian. That was one of the most popular Native American languages, okay? So it's not a tribe, but it's the language that they spoke, okay? 
and where these groups lived was in was in New York State today. So New York City, but that entire state. Okay, that's where um, these people lived. This group of Native Americans. Um, and here are the tribe names. So they are all separate tribes that sort of make up one sort of big tribe almost. Okay, one bigger group, but they all have their own tribes. So we have Seneca. Hold on. We have Seneca, Mohawk. Um, I don't know why it kicked Vivi. Seneca, Mohawk, Cayuga, and Onondaga, and Oneida, sorry. So we have five, okay? Um, and the Haudenosaunee were people of the Longhouse. So open your textbooks to page 63, okay? And somebody tell me what, it, or 64, and somebody tell me what a Longhouse is. Um, Alyssa, go ahead. I, I just see your hand raised. Longhouses are long buildings made of poles covered with sheets of bark. Good. Okay. So we learned about Pueblos, right? From the Hopi. We learned about Hogan's. Um, we learned about wigwams. And now we're learning about a new sort of house, and it's called a longhouse, okay? A longhouse is exactly that. It's made out of bark. So they almost like layer it. Um, they probably weave it together with the really fine thin wood, and that's what they come up with. Um, and each longhouse held several families. So let's say um, I had my own family, Gianni had his own family, um, Patricia had her own family, and Demetrio had his own. Um, and we would all still live together in one big house. Okay. Um, and just as this is just a reminder that these are the tribe names. So if we were to do something about like name name tribes, you would want to name either Seneca, Mohawk, Cayuga, Onondaga, or Oneida. Remember, the Haudenosaunee is not referring to one big tribe. It's referring to just a, one big group of tribes that all spoke the same language. So here's the life of these people. Um, for art and for cultural reasons, they made wampum. So can somebody tell me what wampum is? Right there in your textbook, page 64, I think. Wampum is a necklace or a belt of small polished beads made from shells and strung or woven together. Good, good. Yeah, exactly. So um, there are there are either a belt or a sort of necklace uh, made of of beads, right? And, and now that I think about it, I should have done this with B, but um, it's very common for Native Americans um, to have beads. Uh, if you look at pictures, they have them around their necks, right? There's something like that even, or even something like that. Um, that's, that's wampum, okay? Those are the beads that, that they wore, um, which is something that you might think of now, you know, when you've seen pictures. You're like, oh yeah, they're always wearing something like that. Well, now you know what they are. They're called wampum, okay? These were used in ceremonies, like religious ceremonies, or let's say someone was becoming the leader of our tribe. Let's say um, Demetrio was becoming the leader, so we'd have a big ceremony, and we'd all make him a special wampum, and we'd put them on him one by one um, to symbolize, you know, him becoming leader. Um, that's just an example. That's not in your book. Um, or let's say um, Viviana and I were both members of different tribes. I was a Seneca, and she was a Mohawk, right? And we were fighting over, you know, we both want to hunt the land and, you know, get all the deer. So we might say, okay, Vivi, you can hunt on Mondays and Tuesdays, and I will hunt on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And what we'll do is we'll agree and we'll shake on it. But to symbolize that we have an agreement, um, I might make her wampum and she might make me one as well. Okay, and that'll just seal our agreement. Um, or they can just simply be used as a gift. So um, if Alyssa is just my best friend and I want her to know that um, she has the honor of being my best friend, um, I might make her a wampum as a gift, okay? Um, but it was a big part of their art and their culture. Um, so that's important to know. And it is a vocab word. So any word highlighted like this is a vocabulary word, okay? So these would probably be on your test. So it's important to make sure um, if you haven't done already, highlight them for yourselves or write them down, um, just so you know, so you don't have to go back and look. Um, in the 1500s, the Haudenosaunee lands were connected, okay? So the lands meaning all of the villages that connected these five, um, 
five groups, these five tribes. And this is where the their trail was. This is how long the trail was. Their villages were set up all throughout here. And you can even see the specific tribes. We've got Seneca, Cayuga, Onondaga, Oneida, and Mohawk. And this is where they mostly resided, which is pretty crazy. Um, so does somebody want to read the textbooks? Um, Demetrio, you have your hand up. Um, but if you also can read us the textbook uh, definition of the Haudenosaunee Trail. Demetrio? So which page was it again? 64. So what am I reading? You had your hand up. Did you have a question? Yeah, but I'll still do it. Okay, so you can ask your question first while you're looking. You're looking for the Haudenosaunee Trail. Haudenosaunee. It'll probably be highlighted in your book. So 64? 64 or maybe 65. I'm not quite sure, but that's the chapter we're looking at. So it should be in your Haudenosaunee. A unique trail connect the people connect the main village of all five people good yes good so that is what maybe the reason i want you to read that and know that even though you probably already stand understand it guys is because when you are taking your test um since your test is going to come from that book that's sort of uh, the definition that they're going to give you so it's important that you hear it at least once before you know you study it before your test um you're not, and I don't have a test scheduled. I'm just making sure that you guys know that it'll eventually come, you know? So the more you can prepare for it, the better for yourselves. Um, um, so yeah, the Haudenosaunee was a trail of all of those villages, okay? All of those groups of people, those tribes, right? Um, I saw a few people, a uh, few other people with their hands raised. Um, oh wait, um, could I use the bathroom? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, Abril, do you need, did you need to say something? Or have a question or a comment? No, I was gonna. I wanted to read the the trail thing. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um. Okay. So now we're talking about the leaders. So this was probably my favorite thing. Um, learning to. I mean, yeah, learning when I was learning about the Native Americans. Um, this chapter for you guys. This was probably my favorite thing that I came across because it's very rare. Remember when we talked about uh, U.S. history? Um, we talked about how it was always sort of. Um, the leaders, you know, of our country, the presidents were always men, right? Um, and that's very common in the United States. Um, a lot of congressmen for a long time were, were men. And then we had um, um, uh, Ruth um, Bader Ginsburg, um, RBG, right? She's she's a big, big deal. One of the first women congresswomen. Um, now we have AOC, right? She's very, um, very popular. Maybe you've heard of them, or, or those women, or your parents have talked about them, or whatever. You might have seen them on the news or social media, whatever it is that you guys have. Uh, or uh, you don't know much about that at all, and, and that's fine. And that's what I'm saying is that in the United States history, um, from way back then and still to today, we don't see a lot of women in positions of power, right? So it's interesting to learn that um, for these groups, that was it's quite the opposite. So the women have always been the leaders of the clans, okay? Um, and can somebody tell me what a clan is before we keep going? A group of people? A group of people? Yeah, a group of people. Sure, yeah, exactly. Is that what our book says? It's, no, it says the women were the leaders of the clans. A clan is a group of families who share the same ancestors. Clans control the land. Good. So very similar, right? A group of people, in this case, uh, a group um, a family, a uh, group of families. So good. Um, good. I think that was Alan. Um, that was a good job. Um, a good attempt, right? A, 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 a... It was me. No, before Abril, I think somebody oh. had said it was just a group of people. But no, I know Abril gave us the correct, the, the word one, which was good. I mean, from the book, which was good as well. But um, yeah, so a clan is just, the, it was the group of families, right, that shared the same ancestors. They were descendants of the same people. Kind of like when we learned <coughs> about, um, who was it? Uh, the Natchez, right? 
they were descendants of um, mound builders, remember? And we looked at what a mound was. I showed that picture. It was like that weird hill that had the grass on top of it. So a clan is basically um, people who all share the same the same ancestors. So basically like another word for tribe, we can say, if that helps us to remember it. So basically who ruled these were the women, okay? The women were in the positions of power. They were sort of the, the boss, the head honchos, um, some people might say. So basically, uh, they owned the longhouses, okay? These homes, they were the owners. Um, when they got married, uh, the husband had to live in their longhouse, okay? They had to live in the longhouse of the of uh, of their choice, okay? So let's say uh, Patricia gets married, uh, her husband has to do whatever and whichever she says after they get married. And if she wants to live in the longhouse 30 minutes away, 30 miles away from his from his mother because maybe his mother drives her crazy, she can do that, okay? And he has to listen to her because his wife sort of rules him and rules where he lives, which is pretty crazy to think about. Um, and also the women had to approve of every important decision made within a clan. So let's say, let's just pretend here that Angela, uh, Abril, let's go through and see who else, uh, Kayla and Alyssa, okay, and myself and Jimena, okay, we are all, we all represent different tribes. So we'll go back. So we won't include myself. So let's say Jimena is the leader of the Seneca tribe. Um, Kayla is the leader of the Mohawk tribe. Uh, who else did we mention? Abril is Cayuga tribe. Alyssa is Onondaga tribe. And um, Angela, I can't remember who, if I said Angela Spice. Um, but Angela would be Oneida, right? Okay. So the five of you guys are the leaders of your clans. And let's say that Demetrio belongs to um, to the Seneca tribe. So who is that? I think that was Jimenez. And, and Julian belongs to the Mohawk tribe, right? Um, you guys would have to go through through Jimena, and I can't remember who I said was in charge of Mohawk. Uh, I think I said, let's just pretend, I think I said uh, Kayla, right? So you guys would have to go through Jimena and Kayla to make decisions. And let's say you guys were like, oh, we want to trade, let's just trade with each other. Um, you would have to get permission from them first. You couldn't do anything without their sort of approval, okay? And then on top of it, uh, let's say that one of you, one of the boys in our class, let's say um, Alan wanted to be the village leader of Jimena's Seneca tribe. Um, he can't just say, I'm the village leader because I'm strong and I'm smart and everybody likes me. Uh, if Jimena says, no, Alan, you know what? I'm sick of you. Go away. Um, you're not the village leader. And she decides that Daniel Salinas is a better village leader. That's ex that's exactly what's going to happen. And everybody's going to have to live with it. Uh, Alan's going to have to suck it up. And um, yes, Alyssa, you can use the restroom. And um and Daniel will have to take the position, okay? So Jimena would be the boss in all things that happen within that tribe. So it's pretty crazy to think that the women are, they have so much control. Even if you're not a clan leader, even when you're just married, you still have a, you know, a good amount of control. Uh, Gianni, I see your hand up. That was an accident. So does everybody understand that, um, how this sort of like leadership went? In that uh, situation, the, the women were sort of the, the big, the big, big dogs. Um, and so I wanted to put a reminder here to remember, to remind you all that uh, the Haudenosaunee was a group of many little tribes, right? So it, was a, it wasn't a tribe itself. Like I said, I know I've said this before, but it's good to repeat it just in case. Um, they It consisted of five tribes, these five, okay? Um, and um, as they began to grow, right? Um, more, there were more people, right? They had to, they had, they needed more resources, more food, um, more food to hunt or grow, whatever it is. Um, they needed more land, right? And then also, uh, when there's so many, many people, it's hard for the village leaders and the leaders of the clans to keep track of, to keep track of everything. Um, let's say we made an agreement, uh, my tribe and, and Eric's tribe, and we sort of decide and he broke that agreement um that might result in a war between my tribe and his tribe and um maybe the same would happen um with between let's say if Alyssa had a tribe and he met us tribe a same thing a war would break out there so so that was what was happening these tribes were growing and growing and they didn't know what to do um when when sort of there was no control right there was no control over this 
whole village, this whole trail, and they were all getting negatively affected by it. So that's what we are going to learn about tomorrow. Um, we're going to talk about the creation of the Federacy. Um, and a Federacy basically means kind of like how we have the United States, right? We have independent states. We have Indiana, Illinois, all of that stuff. But they're not all considered the same. We're all um, one under the United States. And that's sort of what these tribes decide to do. They sort of decide to make their own um, big government to help them all stay under control. So that's what we're going to learn about tomorrow. But today, just sort of reflect and think about, you know, that was a boatload of information. But we learned about five new tribes all at once. They were all very similar, okay? They were all Haudenosaunee. They spoke the same language. They had sort of a similar art. Um, uh, and they all had the same sort of uh, leadership, which was women in power, right? Uh, which is pretty great to see. So um, we're all good there. Um, there's no homework in social studies today, so you guys can go ahead and start your break a little bit early, two minutes early today. Um, go ahead, start your break, stretch, do what you have to do, and then come back at 11.15.
Hello guys, you want to come back? It's about to be 11.15. We're going to get started. Every, everybody come back, put your cameras back on, please. Um, make sure you're not sleeping through class. Fantastic. Waiting on a few more. There are a lot more cameras off than there were earlier. Waiting on a brill. Who else had their camera on? Um, let's see. Humana, Sophia. Okay. Daniel I can't hear who that was. I'm here. My camera doesn't work. But. A random jacket. Is this English now? Yes, now we are going on with English. Um, have your textbooks in front of you. Um, big yeah. one or the small one? Yeah, big one. We're going to finish our story from yesterday. Remember, we were reading our story. The big one. That's what we used to call it. The big or small the big, big the one with the squirrel on it. Yep. Yeah. The biggest one ever. I found my old iPad. We're continuing with the Kojo story, right? One hand? Yes. Yeah, Metro, yeah. So you'll be opening the page. What is it? Like 28? Or not 20? 17? Or Wait, Renegade. Right? What page is it? Um, eleven know. or ten. Ten eleven. Seventeen. Open your books to page seventeen. Um eighteen. To my, to, there's two girls in our class that I keep constantly having to tell them to put their cameras on. Um, you know who you are. Um, you cannot have your camera on. Abril, it's not you. I know that you, you had already had your camera on. The other two, um, Guillardo and Arcianiga, uh, or Ars, there we go. Keep your cameras on, guys, um, please. If I have to say it again, I will email your parents. Um, I'm really tired of it. I'm really tired of it. Um, Sophia, go ahead. Yes, Alyssa, I can see you. I don't want to get around because one, I have food. And I might have to like get up sometimes because I got two kids in my room that don't want to leave. Okay, wait, what was what was what was what you were saying? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I might, I'm, I'm going to have my camera because one, I'm eating and I might have to get up because there's kids in my room. Okay, so when you're, sorry, when you're done eating, put your camera back on, please. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So. Let's get started with the story. So who remembers where we left off yesterday? What was the last big thing we remember about the cultural story? 
Go ahead, Viviana. That um, he wants to be get his own farm, and he he went. He's going to college. Yeah, good. So we the last big thing we remember about him was that he wanted to go to college. He had a dream. Uh, Julian, why don't you tell us the first? What's the first big thing that we that we learned about Kojo? It was a little bit sad, but what was the first thing that we, the big thing that we learned about him? That his father passed away. Good, yes. So we learned that his father passed away, and that meant that he couldn't go to school. And then when we finished, we learned that he, in fact, was going, he had his dream of going to college, right? So, so that's a huge difference from the start to where we left off. Um, so I am going to... Open the going to college. Well, that was his last big dream, right? He said um, he was. Yeah, I remember he said he was going to college and then at college he learned he realized that he wanted his own farm. Right. So he went back to school, back to regular school. And then he said that he loved it even more. So he continued on to college. And then when he reached college, he realized he wanted to um, become a farmer and have a farm of his own. This is all from the other day. Um, sorry, I'm just showing the meeting. Sorry, it keeps happening. Are you are you gonna let me start recording? I think I don't think I stopped. Yeah, we're still recording. Um, thank you, though. So, oh, yeah, the first things first that I want to go over is our define example and ask assignment that we had from about two days ago. Um, so a lot of you guys did not do this correctly, okay? Um, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you what it should have looked like. Why did I do that? Whatever. I'm gonna show you what it should have looked like, okay? So I'm gonna show you somebody's assignment from 5B, and you're gonna see what they did in exactly sort of what I expected of you guys, okay? So we're going to look at Daniel P's. So define, he put he put the word afford um, to have enough money to pay for things. Um, he put, uh, that was um, a mistake he said. Example, I have enough money to afford a house, right? And then he asked the question, but what would I do with the house after I afford it? Um, now you could just use a different question, whatever it is that you have to do, okay? You guys can see the screen, right? Yeah, you can. Okay, so so this is what I expected of you guys. Okay, um, for some reason, that's not what I got. For some reason, a lot of you guys only gave me the defined part. You only gave me the definition. Uh, and you didn't do example and ask. Uh, this was worth a lot more points um, than normal homework. I think this was work, worth about 10. Or was it 15? I'm not quite sure. Sorry, the garbage man's outside. Um, but it was worth a lot more points than than normal homework. So if you didn't do it correctly, you're gonna lose out on a lot of points. So sort of what we're do what we're gonna do is um, it's sort of gonna be like a one time only thing. Is you have until Monday to correct the assignment to do it correctly. Um, if you haven't done it at all, it's a perfect chance for you to have you know to get it done and turn it in. Um, but like I said, if you don't do it, if you haven't done it, then um, then do it correctly, okay? Because there are too many of you guys who did it incorrectly, and I'm I don't want to give away, you know, two out of ten, three out of ten, zero out of ten, whatever the case is, okay? So go ahead and do it correctly. You have until Monday. This is not going to happen often. Um, the only reason I'm doing it is because uh, when we learn new vocabulary throughout the year, right? Um, we're going to learn a bunch of new vocabulary. Uh, you're going to have to do define, example, ask every time I assign vocabulary. 
Okay, so you're going to have to know how to do it. So for each word, there's supposed to be three things, a definition, uh, an, a, a sentence, and a question. And then you get to the new word, and then you do the definition, you know, something like that. So um, make sure that you go back and fix that if you haven't done it correctly. If you have done it, then you have nothing to worry about, okay? So I just wanted to give you guys that, um, that sort of extension on that assignment because um, there were a lot of people who didn't do it correctly. I don't know where my... Okay. Um, and homework questions. So does everybody feel okay about the summary? Um, how do you guys feel about that? Do you think everything, do you guys feel okay? Are there any questions? If you have questions, raise your hand virtually. No, so far no questions. Okay, so just in case, um, oh, Alyssa, and who else has their hand raised? And Julian. Julian has his hand raised. Go ahead, Julian, ask your question. You know how you said in the instruction it's supposed to be 10 sentences long? Um, I meant like a minimum of 10 sentences. So if you have more, it's probably that you will have more. It's very likely that you will have more than 10, but you should not have less than that. In the first time or the second one? Or in total or in like the, just one at a time? Yeah, in total. I meant in total, yeah. Oh, I wrote 10 yesterday. Yeah, see, exactly. You'll probably write 10 for just, I'm so sorry about that. Sorry, guys, give me one minute, okay? Just one second. I'm going to. Sorry about that purge sound. If you saw it, that was just a text message tone. But um, yes. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> you'll probably only have ten. You'll probably have ten sentences for just the first half. That's completely normal. Okay. A summary is that's a lot of information. So what I what I wanted to do was sort of um, explain the assignment uh, in a better way. Um, just in case you're like, I still, Miss G, I still don't get it. Um, basically pretend like you and your friend are talking. So let's say you're, you read this story and, and you loved it. Okay. And your mom is like, um, oh, tell me about it. And you're like, oh, just read it. And she's like, I'm not going to read it. Just tell me about it. Okay. And you're like, okay, fine. So it's basically, it's about this kid named Kojo. Um, you know, he's from South Africa and he lives in a village. Um, and then you're going to say like, oh, you know, when we first uh, read about him, his dad is dead and he has, he just lives with his mom and he has to work. So he had to quit school. But then their village, you know, comes up with this idea of, of investing their money, um, you know, to a different family every month. So when it's his family's month, he buys a hen. And, you know, so you're telling the important story. Uh, you're telling the important events of a story. Pretend like you're, you know, you're just sort of talking to somebody if that makes it easier for you guys to understand how to do it. Um, so, like, you wouldn't say, like, you know, Kojo's uniform feels stiff as he walks in the new school. You know, you wouldn't say that. You would just say, so when, you know, when he makes his money back, he finally gets to go back to school stuff like that. You're telling the important events, okay? So that's all that your summary is going to be. If it, if it helps you in your head to rem to think of it as sort of you're talking to a, um, a friend and you're just telling them about the story. Now, I don't want you to just put, you know, we, um, Kojo is a young boy who, who, um, who gets a hen and the hen gives him a lot of money and, you know, blah, blah, and, you know, it's super short. It shouldn't be less than 10 sentences. That's what I meant by that. Um, so it should be long because it's, it's a long story, right? Uh, but it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be like, I'm not expecting you guys to write a whole page, right? I'm not expecting two pages. Whoever that is, please mute your mic. But, um, um, but it should be kind of long, okay? Uh, but it shouldn't be too long. And it's going to be almost like an essay, okay? Um, and if you don't know what an essay is, it's almost like a short paper, okay? Um, so it's almost like a paper, but it's not fully like a paper. It's a little less than a paper, a little more than just a paragraph. It's like that in between, okay? It's going to be graded like an essay. It's going to be worth points like an essay. It'll probably be worth about 15 
to 20 points. That's a lot of points, okay? If you don't do this one assignment or you don't do it um, sort of correctly, let's say, uh, that's almost like not doing five, four assignments. OK, that's a lot of that's a lot of points that you'd be missing. Now, don't worry if you're worried about your grammar, if you're worried about your spelling, your punctuation. Um, try your best, OK? And uh, but I'm not going to, you know, you're not going to get a zero if you keep misspelling a word or, you know, you don't have the correct grammar. I understand this isn't a grammar assignment. This is more of a reading comprehension assignment. I'm making sure that you guys are reading closely. Um, you know how to do the plot event thing that we learned, right? The sequence, um, picking out the main parts. That's sort of what I'm going to be paying the most attention to. Now, if it's obvious that you guys hurried up and typed it in a quick minute and you didn't go back and proofread or, you know, make sure that uh, things make sense to the best of your ability and I can tell and it's obvious, then you're going to get points taken off. OK. So please try to put in some effort. This is a big your first big assignment for me. Um, and um, I'm really I know you guys are all really smart. I can tell if you can if you can sit here and learn virtually. OK, I couldn't have done that when I was in fifth grade. All right, I, I just wouldn't have been able to. Um, so if you guys are able to be here, be present, even if you don't have your cameras, um, then that goes to show something about who you are as people. OK, so I, I think you guys can do this assignment and I think you can do it well. Um, we're reading the story. If you forget, uh, you can always reread it yourself or watch our YouTube videos, whatever you want to do. Um, Julian, go ahead. I see you have your hand up. Did we have to type it or write it? Typing it would be would be good, but if you want to write it out and upload a picture, that's fine. Just please make sure to the best of your ability that your handwriting, I can read it, OK? And you take a good picture of it. But if you want to write um, write it out, that's fine too. I thought we had to write it. You thought we had to write at all? I thought we did have to write it like. You mean like write it out, like handwritten? Yeah. Um, what I was suggesting was that you write down the notes. Remember yesterday I said pull out your notes, pull out your notebook and take notes. That was to help you for your homework. So that was so that, you know, you, you realize what the important events were. Um, but the thing is, is that like you have 10 sentences, but I don't want a bullet point list, you guys. I don't want you to just have like a bunch. So a bullet point list is something like this, right? Boom, 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 bullet point list. You're just listing stuff. Um, I want it to be a paragraph, OK? Um, so I sort of started the intro sentence for you guys. And if you use my sentence, that's fine. You're not going to get grades. You're not going to get points taken off for starting it the way that I started it. So let me find it. Um, here it is. You guys can see my screen, right? I'm screen sharing. Yeah. OK, so. Um, hold on, give me one second. Going to make us an icky noise really quickly. Make us an icky noise really quickly. OK, sorry, I was just joining on my phone to make sure I can see. So as you can see here, I started it for you. The story one hand starts with the main character Kojo in Ghana, Africa. He lives in a village with his mother. We learned that his father died, so Kojo had to quit school and work. And then you would keep going. So you see how I have it, and you're going to type it up like that. You're going to make it like a paragraph. Then you might say, in his village, since many are poor, um, they all donate their savings to a new family every um, so often. I think they say every month. I'm not quite sure. Um, and when it's Kojo's turn, that would be capitalized, he buys a hen, period. And then you would go ahead and tell me what, you know, what's next. Um, and now it would look like that, okay? I don't know why. There you go. So do you, do you understand that you're going to write it as if you're writing a short story version of this? OK, you're summarizing it. Um, I don't want a bullet point list. This is what I don't want. I don't want this. Let me. This is what not to have. Um, Kojo 
is a boy in Africa. Uh, Kojo has a dead, geez, sorry, has a dead dad. Um, Kojo buys a hen. Kojo makes money and goes to school. Okay, this is not what I want. Okay, this is not this is not going to be a good a good summary. Okay, um, if this is what notes you have, that's fine. But if you even make it like this, um, and you do that, that might even get you a point up. But it's still not that good, right? Kojo is a boy uh, in Africa. That's uh, you could say Kojo is a boy who lives in a village in Africa. Um, Kojo's dad is dead, so he has to work, right? And then. Kojo makes money from his, you know, Kojo buys a hen. How does he buy a hen? The important detail is, is that he buys a hen from the village money that they gave to his family, okay? That's an important part. You can't just say he buys a hen. And we'd be like, oh, I thought he was poor. How did he buy a hen, you know? if um, So pretend like when I'm reading it, I've never read the story. And you guys are basically shortening it up for me, okay? So if somebody who's reading the story, who who is reading this, if this is what you turn in, Let's pretend we give this to Miss C. She's going to be like, um, oh, so the kid is rich, right? Um, no, the kid, you know, Kojo um, is a boy in Africa who, um, you know, is a poor boy in Africa or who's a boy who lives in Africa, in a poor part of Africa. And then she might say, well, how do you buy a hen? You know what I'm saying? So make sure that um, that you're including all of the important things, okay? Him starting off poor is important because as we keep reading, we realize that he's starting to earn money and become a, you know, a big figure for his for his village. Does that sound good? Everybody understands the summary assignment. You know what not to do and sort of what to do, right? OK, so let's go ahead and continue with the story. All right. So go ahead and open to page 17 of your textbook. Um, and then let's get started, OK? So we left off, we left off with, um, with what? We left off with Kojo deciding when he went to college, deciding that he wants to have a farm of his own, right? That's his dream. So let us continue and figure out what Kojo does next. Um, Okie dokie, here we go. After Kojo finishes college, he decided he decides to take a big risk. OK, so he's taking a chance. He will use all the money he and his mother have saved to start a real poultry farm. He buys a large plot of land and enough wood and wire to build chicken coops. Now he needs hens, 900 of them. OK, so that's a lot of hens to start the farm. He needs another loan and it has to be a big one. This time Kojo goes to a bank in Kumasi, a nearby town. When the banker hears that Kojo wants to buy 900 hens, he shakes his head. He does not want to lend money to a young man from a poor family. So basically, Kojo gets treated differently because he's already seen as poor. Like the second that this one banker sees him, he's like, um, and you know, we sort of talked about profiling um, with, with slavery very briefly, right? But um, a lot of times people get treated based off the way they look, whether it's the color of their skin or the fact that they look like they might not have a lot of money, okay? And that's exactly what happened to Kojo in this first bank. He shows up and this guy just doesn't like the way he looks. You know, to him, he's like, oh, you don't look like you come for money. I'm not gonna lend you alone, um, which is pretty upsetting. Uh, and it's a, it is a social justice issue, right? That that happens um, in, in, fake, in fake stories like this one and in real life, okay? Um, it's definitely something that could really happen, sadly. Um, so Kojo does not give up. He goes to the capital city, Accra, and visits the bank's headquarters. Kojo waits and waits to see the bank president. The bank is near closing when finally the president agrees to see him, but not for long because he's a busy man. 
So in your head, maybe you've seen a movie scene like this, but just imagine. So Kojo is this, you know, he gets turned on the first time, um, but he we learn something about him. He's not the type that really gives up easily. So what he does is he travels to the bigger bank, you know, the biggest bank. Let's say we came to a little one here in Indiana and they, they deny us. So we're like, you know what, you know, forget this. Let's pack our bag and let's go to the city of Chicago. We're going to go see the big dogs. And that's exactly what he does. And what Kojo does is he's the type that he gets there at 830 in the morning right when the bank opens and he sits on that bench all day. And he's asking the assistant, um, can I see the bank? Can I see the bank president? You know, and the assistant's like, no, he's busy. You know, you have to make an appointment. Um, and he's like, OK, I'll just wait here all day until he's not busy anymore. OK, so that's the type of person that Kojo is. He he is not the type that's going to give up. And he sits there. Imagine this near closing. He sits there from 830 to 530 all day waiting for this bank president to give him the time of day. OK, that's the type of person that Kojo is. Um, so Kojo tells the banker that he has schooling and will work hard. The banker has heard such stories before and he frowns. So basically, this banker is like, you're full of crap. I don't care. I don't want to hear it. You know, he's listening to him because he's waited there all day, but he, you know, he has already made up his mind. He's not going to do anything for him. But then Kojo tells him about the small loan that his village gave him and the brown hen and the egg money he has used to build his flock. So Kojo tells him the whole story of how he came to where he was today. And it's an interesting story, right? It's not something you hear every day. So now the banker sits back in his chair like this, right? And he's doing this thing, you know, that you've ever seen in movies. I mean, it's either the villain is doing it or the guy who's thinking he's like that. That's sort of what he's doing, right? It says, he sits back in his chair and he taps his fingers together. This is not a story that, he's hear, he, that he hears every day. He smiles and nods and Kojo will get his loan. So he impressed him. Kojo told him a story about his village loan um, and sort of the dynamic that they had going and it impressed the guy. Um, and so he gave Kojo the loan. The banker and Kojo shake hands and it's a deal. Back home, Kojo buys his hens, all 900 of them. Soon there will be eggs, so many eggs that he now needs helpers to collect them. So now Kojo's reached, reached the point in his business where he gets to hire employees. That's how big his business has become. Kojo's hens are good layers. There are more than enough eggs for his village. So he travels to Kumasi to sell to the shopkeepers there. So now he's selling them not only in his own village, but in in neighboring villages and cities. So his business is really booming. One shopkeeper is called Lumo. So this sounds like a big deal. I think we are going to meet a big character. So this might be something noting we're meeting somebody new. Kojo knows this character well. This man grew up in the same village that Kojo's father did and was a good friend. So we're learning something about Kojo and that is he has a new person in his life. Um, and his name is Lumo. And Lumo is sort of like, he's an older guy, right? He's older. He's about Kujo's fa uh, Kujo. Kojo's father's dad, um, father's age. So he's almost like an uncle, right? Like he's probably seeing him as sort of an uncle uh, figure in his life. He grew up with his father and he, and he has stories about his father. And that's why Kojo probably enjoys seeing him. Kojo always goes to Lumo's shop last and sometimes stays for supper. He likes to hear stories about his father. And he likes the peanut stew and palm oil soup that Lumo's daughter makes. So now we have another character. Her name is Lumusi. She is a teacher, so she is like me. She has many stories about boys just like Kojo once was. Boys who want to learn and boys who have big dreams. Kojo loves these stories and he visits more and more often. He wishes he could hear Lumusi's stories every day. One day he asks if she will be his wife. So now we're realizing that is a really good like boom in our head that um, Kojo is no longer the little boy that we started reading about. So now we might come to realize that um, he's about Miss G's age. He's probably about my age, about 22. Uh, he went to college, um, finished college, um, and now he's going to get married to sort of like his dad's really good friend's daughter, okay? Um, and her name is Lumusi. So now we have a sort of idea of Kojo in our head, and he's not a kid anymore. He's not looking like you. Now he's about my age group, okay? So, so now we might get the idea that we're reading a, sort of like a life story of Kojo. 
Uh, Lumusi is proud to marry Kojo and join him on the farm. Soon Kojo and Lumusi are to be parents. So now they're way past my age because no way in heck is Miss G uh, mom. Um, as years go by, they have three boys and two girls, uh, all strong and clever. So they're all really strong and really smart. With the money from Kojo's eggs, they build a bigger house of cinder blocks and stucco. Kojo's mother even comes to live with them and tends the garden. She will never have to sell firewood again. So in that um, illustration there in your book, in that picture, um, that's showing us probably what um, Kojo's family is. That's what they look like. Um, we've got the children at the bottom, the mother in the corner uh, in the garden, and we have sort of this weird picture of his wife like floating, right? What I would assume that is symbolizing is it could be one of two things. It can be um, Kojo sort of grounding her and she is sort of they're sort of soaring, right? They're 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 prospering. Um, their dreams are endless and they're, they're soaring like birds, they would say, right? They're they're doing really well um, as a family and as a whole. Or it could symbolize, too, that that she is almost like like an angel to to um, Kojo, right? She's she's his angel. Um, she says, you know, his true love, whatever the cheesiness um, all is. Um, she's his wife, okay? So let's keep going. Before long, many people are working on Kojo's farm. So now we have it really, really booming. Men come to feed the chickens and clean the coops. Women collect the eggs and pack them in boxes. Still, other workers drive the eggs to markets in Kumasi and Accra. So now he's selling in two other cities and his village. So his business is growing and growing. As we read little details, we realize that it's really, really growing. The workers have families. In all, 120 people depend on the wages from Kojo's farm. And remember, wages are sort of uh, payments received from work done. So he is employing 120 people so his farm is huge right he has 120 people working for him um and the families like the so he has one family he's going to talk about the example families like the donkers have enough food to, to eat and money for their children's school fees ma odonker can buy medicine when her daughter adika falls ill pa odonker can rebuild the walls of their mud home with cinder blocks and buy wood stamped adinkra cloths for special occasions. So a dinkra we're probably gonna assume is a sort of pattern, a sort of special cloth um, that is native and cultural to South Africa, okay? Um, so basically what we're reading here is Kojo, by employing all of these people, by giving all of these people jobs, he's allowing them to to sort of do what his mother kind of couldn't do for him, which is she, they're all now all able to afford to send their kids to school, they are allowed medicine, they are allowed um, homes, right? So he's sort of giving back to the people in his village um, by providing them with these jobs, um, which is really good. The workers on Kojo's farm can even afford, right? So they, keep, they have enough money to pay for livestock of their own. Livestock meaning um, animals. So some families buy a goat, others buy sheep, and some even start off with one brown hen much like Kojo did. Now we go on to read that Kojo's farm is now the largest in Ghana, okay? So he has, Ghana, remember, is a country in Africa. So now he has the biggest farm in his country. That's a big, big deal. Uh, and his town has grown. Some people come to find jobs on the farm and build homes for their families there. Others come to the town to open shops and sell wares to the workers. One day, as Kojo tallies the accounts, he hears a knock at the door. Adika Adonker, and remember, we just learned about her family. And remember when she falls ill, they are able to afford her medicine, right? So this is her, this is supposed to be a couple years later, right? She knocks at the door, all grown up, and she's there. She greets Kojo and then holds out a small sack of coins. She tells Kojo that she has saved her wages, or her money earned. With just a bit more, she says, she could buy a mechanical grain mill and start a business helping families turn their grain into flour. Would it be possible to have a small loan, she asks him. Kojo knows her family well. They have worked on the farm for many years. He likes this idea, but he makes her promise that one day she will loan the money 
to another family. So here we learn something about Kojo, right? He what he not only is uh, has earned all of his money, right, and earned everything and became, you know, one of the most successful farmers in his country, or the most successful farmer. Um, he also knows and understands the importance of continuing to give back to his community. And so what it sounds like is he sounds like he's sort of trying to start a legacy. And a legacy is almost like he wants someone right after someone to do the same thing that he did, right? And I think he sees that in Adika, right? He sees her as being the sort of person who can do exactly what he does. He's going to do, you know, what his village did for him and give her the loan, have her invest in in her in her um, grains to turning in, turning into flour, her grain mill, um, the way that his village invested him starting his hen farm and look at where it got him. And he sort of believes that Adika can do the same thing. And he tells her, yeah, I'll make I'll give you that loan. But what I want you to do is I want you to do exactly what I'm doing for you when you're successful like me. So he knows that when she turns into this successful person the way he did, um, he wants her to do the same thing for a kid that might ask her for a loan the same way his village did, did to him. So he wants it to sort of be a cycle to keep happening so that his community can keep growing and people will still, and you know, they can employ more people and you know, everybody can afford to be happy and healthy. Adika agrees. And bit by bit, as one person helps another, the lives of many in the family, the cheese Louise, the lives of many families in the town improve. And so do the lives of their children. More children have enough to eat, more children go to school and more are healthy. So Kojo really has a sort of domino effect happening where he's sort of saving his entire town. He's kind of like a hero in the non-superhero way, in a realistic way. Uh, I'll take questions right after we finish, okay? As the years pass, Kojo's poultry farm becomes the largest in all of West Africa. He's older now and a proud grandfather. So now Kojo is way past Miss G's age. He's way past the middle age where he has kids. Now he's sort of, he's a grandpa now, okay? He's old. His grandchildren visit him often and they help collect his eggs. Where will this one go, they ask. And what about that one? To Bamako and Mali, he replies. Or to, oh, oh geez, oh, Ogadugu. I messed that up earlier. In Burkina Faso, these are cities, okay? Or countries. Kojo's workers pack thousands of eggs a day. And Kojo feels proud each time an egg truck pulls away to take food to families in neighboring countries. So now that he's older, his his sort of business has boomed completely. OK, it's taken off. He is one of the biggest farmers to exist. OK, to own this sort of business, this egg business. By now, Kojo has paid many taxes to the government of Ghana. So have his workers and the shopkeepers who sell his eggs. The government uses the tax money to build roads, schools, and health clinics across the country. It uses the money to improve the port of Accra, where ships from many countries come to trade. So it's really getting put back into his country. One more egg truck drives away, and Kojo looks down at his youngest grandson. The next time the boy asks Kojo where an egg will go, he will say, to your future, my child. This is the way that one young boy named Kojo, with one small loan, to buy one brown hen eventually changed the lives of his own family, his community, his town, and his country. It all started with one good idea and a small loan that made it come true. It all started with one hen. And that is our story. So, <laughs> Julian, you had your hand up. Is there something that you would like to say? No, that's topic. No. Sophia, go ahead. The funny thing is that all this happened because of one single hen. Right. Yeah, one single hen that laid five eggs in the first week, right? And he got lucky because I wonder what would have happened if had his dreams, um, I wonder if his dreams would have come true had that first hen been a sort of like a flop, right? And it didn't lay any eggs. Um, that would have there would have been no story for us to read, right? As sad as it is, um, but yeah, good, uh, Sophia. It starts off with literally one one chicken, right? Um, Gianni, I know you have your hand up, but I know it's sometimes an accident, so I'm not quite sure if yeah if you have something you want to share. 
I'm still gonna say S. If you leave a mob or not, well, a baby chicken. Could there be a baby chicken? Um, that's a good question. If I was, if I had knowledge of farming, uh, or if I was good at science, I would probably be able to answer that question. But there's definitely like, there's almost like, I think of it like duds and non duds. Um, like the eggs that we eat are sort of like the duds of the egg of the the eggs that hen lay, and then there are some that can can become baby chickens, something like that. I don't know. Like, what? that's a good question. Let's look it up really quick. Um, anybody else? So, um, talk about the story. Who else has something to say about the story while I look this up? Is the first hen still alive? I don't know. That, that'd that be a good question. Um, I don't, I doubt it, but, but maybe, I don't know. I feel like that first hen might have died, so rest Do in you peace. think that do you think that they based it off of a real life character? Um, okay, duh. So basically, let, let me let me ask the one question. Uh, well, let me answer the question regarding that's relevant to class. Um, I don't think it's based on a true story. I think it's a realistic fiction, though. So remember, it's it seems like really realistic, like it sounds real. It almost sounds like a movie that we might watch, even like based on a true story, you know, like a figure in history. Um, that's that's what it reminded me of too when I read it. Um, but it is fake. But it would be great if it was real, right? Um, so to go back to our chicken question or our egg question. So basically, how it works is two ways. A, a hen can lay an egg by not mating, okay? So you know how like when, when, when animals mate, they have kids, right? So a hen can do two things. Um, it can not mate and lay eggs, and those are the eggs that we eat, those are the eggs that Kojo sells. Or they can mate, okay? And that means that that egg is fertilized, and that results in, you know, they have to care for it, and they like sit on it, and they have to warm it up, and it has to have certain sun exposure. Then it can hatch and be a baby, a baby chicken. OK, so there's two. So they can still lay eggs without mating. OK, a woman, a, a, a girl hen can just lay the eggs. So you just go ahead and lay them. And that's the eggs that we cook and crack and um, that we eat that are delicious that we buy from the store. And that's a good way of thinking of Kojo's business. He ended up um, at the end. He ended up being one of those guys who sells, you know, the carton of eggs that we buy, like at Strax or at Aldi or something like that. OK, those that's Kojo's business. That's what he did. He ended up being a small one uh, where he would just sell it by hand or in little boxes to his neighbors, but it grew and grew and grew, and now he's selling to big stores. Um, uh, Gianni, Viviana, and then Sophia, since you guys have your hands up, we'll lower in that order. What did you say, Gianni? Mine's not based off of the store, so I want them to go first. Okay, Viviana and Sophia. What if like the one hand doesn't like it's not like we, like um it doesn't work? Do you think it's like he's gonna like try again or like something? Yeah, so I think you can take your time with one hen as well. It might not lay eggs. Remember in the first day, um, this brown hen she didn't lay a single egg for him. Um, but then he got lucky in the second day she laid um, some, and then the next day she laid some. So yeah, sometimes it might take a minute. It might take a little bit for them to lay their eggs. Oh. So yeah, that's a good question. Um, Sophia. I wonder if he ever ended up with little chicks in his farm and then he was just questioning of why he had little chicks. Like say when they delivered all, all the eggs and they didn't know that they had a child in there, someone just about to make dinner, cracks it open and then it's the actual chicken. Oh no. So yeah, that is a good question. I, I'm pretty sure though, um, much like, you know, other animals, um, their eggs, um, when the when the hens know that it has their, their baby inside, right? Um, they become more protective and the egg itself looks a bit different. So that, you know, when he goes and, you know, it's constantly pecking and he's like, you know, shoot, what are you pecking at? And he picks it up and he's gonna say, Oh, that's that's why you're pecking, right? And um I'm sure Kojo probably would have used that to his advantage of the of the hens that did have baby chicks, because think about it. 
uh, that's more hens and more hens to give him more eggs, right? Uh, so it's almost like getting free hens if you let them sort of mate and have babies. Uh, and they're cute. Little, little chicks are so Ms. cute. Miss Gomez? Yes. What if, like, oh, what's called the baby eggs? Like, like they don't lay eggs. No, like the, um, the other chickens don't lay eggs. Um, well, that, that's a brutal, that's a brutal response that I don't know if you'll want to hear. Oh, uh, no. Um, I'm not, this isn't for Kojo, all right, but, um, uh, like, on my, uh, when I go to Mexico, um, on my family's farm, uh, if they don't, if the chicken is no longer seen as, uh, useful, um, usually the chicken will, <laughs> will get, yeah, will die, right? And, you know, you eat the chicken. Um, I'm sure you guys, have, I mean, you guys have eaten chicken before, right? So you know that, that, that people kill the animals and they eat the, they eat the chicken. So people eat chicken, people eat the chicken feet. I mean, people eat just about every part of chicken. Um, and that's normal. That is normal on farms, you know, I'm seeing with pigs, right? If you guys eat bacon, uh, that's pigs. If you eat pork chops, that's pigs. Um, all of that is pig, 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 right? Uh, a lot of times farm animals are used for food. Uh, it's sad, but it's true. Um, and even the babies are used for food, right? Look at look at eggs. Uh, eggs can be seen as chicken I mean, babies. they're not wrong. Right. I mean, you can't, uh, you can't just leave a chicken there dead. You just have to eat it. Like it's delicious. It is the way that the world works. Now, uh, if you are uh, if you are vegan, uh, maybe you you don't agree with that, and and you don't eat anything uh, made from animals, and that's fine. Or vegetarian as well, that's fine too. That is your personal choice. Um, I'm not knocking either one. Uh, whichever one you choose, you live it the way you want. Uh, I don't know what I am. I'm like a I eat meat and vegetables. I don't know what I am. I like both. You're just an eater. <laughs> if let's say let's say you decided that um, let's say Jimena is a huge animal activist and she says I don't think animals should be used for for anything, not even their milk, right? Not even cow's milk is okay, um, or not I'm even nice. cheese because cheese is made out of out of from animals. So she would be a vegan. A vegan means that you don't. I eat have milk right here. Right. A vegan means that you don't eat anything that comes from animals. Not even what? their milk from Where cow. does cheese come from? What's the animal that comes from cheese? So cheese yeah. cow. Yeah, so cheese is dairy, so it comes from a cow. Oh. Miss Gomez? Yeah. How many like um like hen like hens or hens does he have? So remember he started off with one and then they talk about like throughout a after one month he got, you know, two more and then after a couple months, he got three, and then after a year, remember, he had 25. And then we talk about when he wanted to get loan, remember, he wanted 900 hens. 925? Okay. Um, it doesn't have the exact number, but yeah, think about like 925. But when it, by the time he was an old man, right, a grandfather, it was probably a lot, a lot, a lot more. Like 1,000? Yeah, like 1,000, like 200 something. Right? Yeah. I would assume by the time he was an old man and his and his business was was worldwide, right? Because right, he was a big yeah. country. Um, I would say he probably had around 5,000, 7,000 hens, right? He had a lot. If it's the biggest in the country, and then he's starting to sell the other countries, and the end, you know, he's selling them um, to Mali. Uh, we got to assume that his business is the biggest in the game. Okay. He's got at least 5,000. Um, who else has questions? Angela's had her hand up for a while. Let's hear from Angela. Then we'll go Julian and then Gianni. Um, like when they lay the eggs, can they lay every day? Can they lay the eggs every day or they have like a span where they can't? Um, I'm not quite sure. That's a good question. Uh, I know we're really, um, we're really interested in, in chickens, guys. But I promise uh, I wasn't expecting all of these questions about chickens. So I, I don't really know all of the correct answers about farming. I just know about um, English and social studies, really. Uh, but that's a good question. I'm not quite sure. I'm sure there's had, there has got to be, like, seasons where they lay more than they do. 
um, because like ana speaking of anatomy, um, there's a certain time when you're fertile, meaning where you can have babies and, you know, um, lay eggs. And then there's a certain time where you're not fertile and then a certain time when you're fertile. And when you're fertile is likely when you lay those eggs. So that's a good question. Um, we'll go uh, Sophia and then Gianni. Or no, Gianni and then Sophia. I'm sorry, Gianni had his hand up and then Sophia. Right, yeah, that's what we're going to assume that that's what he did, right? He took advantage of that. All right, let's make this questions quick. Um, if it's not about the story, then we're, we're not going to ask them just because I just realized that we spent a lot of time talking about random chicken facts and we only have 10 minutes left of class. Um, so, Sophia, if you have a question, and Angela, if 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 it's a chicken-related question that you don't think will be beneficial, I left my hand up on accident. Okay, Sophia, do you still have a question? I keep telling you something. If you have a chicken question, go look it up yourself because we need to get out of class, and I'm tired. Okay, me too. Um, all right, so. Remember the big events, okay? We learned a lot of really, really, really big events, okay? So your summary is going to have a lot more of, of information, okay? Uh, we learned, like, a lot from Kojo getting, going to college and getting his farm, getting the loan from the banker. I mean, he got married. He had kids. He employed all kinds of people. He gave back to his community. And there's probably a couple more that I'm even missing, okay? So make sure that you can you put those in your summary, okay? Um, don't forget that we have our spelling test tomorrow, okay? Um, don't worry about this. It says your answers will be sent to me in the chat. Uh, that's not going to happen. Um, I'm just going to do a sort of a Google form, okay? Um, meaning, like, I'm going to send you. So you're going to come to class. We're going to do social studies. Uh, you're going to stay on the computer. OK, and I'm going to send you a link and you're going to take your test. Uh, you're going to have 10 minutes. OK, um, and then after the 10 minutes, your time is up. You're going to come back to your computer and we're going to still have class after our test. OK, that's one. Two, uh, if you decide to stay in the team's meeting, which is fine during your test, that's OK. But your mic needs to be muted. Um, if your mic is not muted uh, and, you're, and uh, you're goofing off or you're telling test answers, you will automatically get a zero. No question. Uh, I don't want to hear excuses. You're just going to get a zero on your first test, and that's going to be a terrible, terrible, terrible start to the semester. OK, guys, so don't do that. Uh, if you think you're too tempted, shut your camera. Off. I mean, leave the meeting and then rejoin if that's what you have to do. OK, um, but make sure you at least start and come to the meeting so I can send you the link. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing, like I said, I know it's tempting, but don't cheat. You guys, um, please don't cheat uh, because when we eventually come back to school, which we will, um, I'm going to retest you guys on these words, right? I'm going to have every right to do that. And if I retest you and you do, you get 100 on your virtual test, but in your in-person test, you get, let's say, a 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10, 5 out of 10, 0 out of 10. I'm going to know you cheated, and then I will be able to avoid your first test and give you a 0 straight off of, from that one. Okay, so I know it's tempting, right? I know you want to make a good first impression. You want to do well. You want to get you want to do good in fifth grade, right? You want to pass, but cheating is not going to get you there. I promise you that. OK. And I don't want to sound like that teacher, right? That like, oh, my God, OK, Miss G. But it's true, OK, because I was there once. OK, I, I can't imagine if I was in your position. All right. I know how it is. I was I just finished school in May. OK, I just got my degree. I know how hard it is to learn virtually. OK, it's hard, um, but uh, but just do what you can, okay? And try to just be honest with yourself. It's just respect yourselves, okay? Because it's going to harm you in the future if you do it. If you if you do it, um, Demetrio and Gianni, um, go ahead and ask your questions. We'll have hear from Demetrio first. Um, I'm just reminding you that um, you're still recording. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so since we still have class, um, we're just, I'm going to keep recording. But thank you, Demetrio. Gianni, I, um, do you have a question? Okay, Gianni. Okay, um, so make sure you do come to class. Uh, if you don't come to class, 
um, we're going to have to do the spelling test still. You know, you're not going to be excused from the test. So make sure you show up to class, guys, especially if you're here today, if you've been here all week and then all oh, magically for some strange reason, you can't be here on Friday. Um, that's a little sus. OK, a little suspicious. I, I don't know how I'd feel or what we would do if you'd get a zero or what we'd have to do because I would have to tell Mr. Chico if I feel like you were skipping class just to skip the test. That's not very fair to me or your classmates. Uh, Gianni, do you have a question? Um, um, why would this be take longer than 10 minutes? Um, there should be no reason for you to take longer than 10 minutes um, because there are only 10 words. This is not a long spelling test. OK, um, I'm going to show you where we can find the words in case you haven't looked at them yet. You're going to go to teams. 5A here you're going to see ELA questions, social studies. ELA is our English language channel. OK, that's our channel. You're going to click on that once. Go to files and you're going to see the beautiful document itself right here labeled spelling words and you have 10. OK, um, if we were in school, you would probably get about 10 minutes to do the 10 words, okay? About 60 seconds a word. Um, if you studied, you shouldn't need longer than that, okay? Um, so it's only gonna take 10 minutes. The form is only gonna be open for 10 minutes. So that's why it's important that you come to class and you're on time and you're ready, okay? Um, what else are we gonna say? Um, that's about it. So for the last four, or Julian, do you have a question? So are you gonna be called to like a separate meeting or how are we gonna do it? So we're going to be in this meeting, OK, and you're going to get a link. I'm going to send you a link. Uh, probably during the break in between social studies and English, OK, um, right before we start English. I'm going to tell you guys, OK, click the link. I might send it in this in the Teams chat if it's easier, because I know you all have access to that and it's going to take you straight to the test. OK, uh, you'll be signed in already to Teams because you're signed in here and you're going to go from there and you're going to click the correct answers and then click next next submit and then you'll be good okay doesn't sound that bad no it shouldn't be bad it's only 10 words i wanted to keep it pretty short pretty simple for our first test okay viviana do you have a question so for the test um so like is it gonna be like what like do you have to like type it in or is it like so I didn't want to do I was going to do type it in, but I realized that your devices have autocorrect. OK, and and that's I mean, you, you want to cheat, right? If it, if it pops up, uh, you can't help correct automatically for you. So I'll probably be like Kahoot. You're going to have multiple choices. I remember the Kahoot game said which is the correct spelling and you have oh, yeah, it. so we'll probably do just that. Um, if you guys want to practice with the hoot kahoot later or together, somebody can host the kahoot and do it together. You can give each other the game codes. That's fine. I, that's encouraged. Okay. Right? You guys should practice together. Make it fun if you want. That's a good way to do it. OK, um, Gianni, do you have a question? Um, I'm not sure if someone said this already, but is it going to be like a typing test? So that's what that's what we just asked. That's what Viviana just finished asking. We said it's going to be multiple choice, kind of like our Kahoot game. Um, so it can't be typing because of autocorrect. OK. OK, so for the last two minutes, let's do it. Ready? Are we ready? OK, here we go. One, two, three. Daniel, can you spell tough for me? Tough. Unmute your mic and try your best to spell tough. If you can't spell it, phone a friend. Tough. T. O U G H. Beautiful. Good job, Daniel. Okay, Sophia. Um, sense. Sense. Like your eyes, nose, ears, smelling. I have five senses. Spell sense for me. Oh, um, Miss Miss Gomez, you're yes. still screen sharing. And we can still see the words. <laughs> Thank you, Demetria. What is it? One more time. S I N C E. Good. That's since we're talking about sense. Sense. I have five senses, right? So since would be I've known you since you were four, right? 
from the time when you were four. Sense. Who can spell sense? Who can give me sense? Jimena, let's hear it. Help out Sophia and let's hear how you spell sense. S C E N T S. Good, almost. That's almost like so sense would be money and that would be C E N T S. Good, good try. Um, so this one seems like a tricky one, guys. Come on, someone give us the correct spelling of sense so we can go. Let's hear it. Um, Victoria, let's hear from Victoria. S-E-N-S-E. -E. Good job, yes. So Jimena had it in her head. She was thinking of money, sense. Um, Julian, if you can mute your mic. Um, uh, Sophia got confused and she was thinking of since as in time, S-I-N-C-E. -E. We are talking about like our five senses, the sight, smelling, you know, hearing. We have senses, right? Sense. Good job, Victoria. S-E-N-S-E. -E. There are a few more words, guys. Please make sure you're reviewing them and looking at them for tomorrow. Um, don't forget, no social studies homework, but your ELA summary for one hen is due tomorrow. So the only homework you have for me is your summary and your spelling test, okay? That's the only thing you have tomorrow. Um, okay. Uh, we'll finish our ELA. We'll finish doing stuff like that. And we'll, and we'll learn, sorry, I get the hiccups. We'll learn a little bit more about our Native Americans. You're free to go. Have a good day. If you have any questions, let me know. Study, study, study. Have a good night. Bye. I will stop recording. Goodbye.